Welcome back to On the Record here on the SABC News Channel. Our conversation continues about the media's reporting, were they right or wrong to publish what they've published ahead of the testimony being given at the Zondo Commission of Inquiry into State Capture. Today, in the inquiry itself, testimony was led by to Angelo Agrizi, who is testifying as the former Chief Operating Officer of Basasa. He spoke about money that was given to certain journalists. Let's see what he said today. Numbers that uh, are, are settled, uh, I see nine. Is that, the one, is that the one we must look at for the next person? That is correct. Okay. Okay. That code is totally different. Mm -hmm. All right. That is PLS, which stands for Papa Le Shabane. That is the director. Yes. Okay. So this one's different, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. That is 71, and it's got a code behind CCV. Yeah. That was a total amount that was given to Papa Le Shabane, and from that amount, he would pay Zach Medice as well, and he was paying journalists and people from Lindela. He was paying journalists as well? Correct. Uh, to do what? Chair, to, to give information and, and to work with them. Uh, or including writing good stories about Bosasa? Presumably, yes. Mm. Okay. So, so he would get a fixed amount. He would yeah. get 71,000 rand a month. Yeah. And he would distribute it. Yeah. And of that money would go to Zach Medici. But we will get to Zach Medici yeah. a bit later on. Okay. Because, so that was part of it. That's what transpired today. Angelo Agrizi there speaking to the Deputy Chief Justice, Chair of the Zondo Commission, Judge Raymond Zondo. Uh, if you're wondering who the journalists are, he does not name the journalists, so he has not yet so far. And the evidence leader, advocate Paul Pretorius, also did not ask him to name names. Samuel Kukeli from SANEF. This is surely damaging to journalism as a whole. Just that clip alone is surely damaging to journalism in South Africa. Uh, absolutely. If you follow social media, we'd have seen today, I mean, it's, it's journalists right, throughout South Africa, it's like they have uh, popcorn on their desks and watching uh, uh, the Zondo Commission and uh, waiting to find out who uh, is going to be named. We want to push these people out of the industry. Uh, we want uh, these people named. Uh, we want uh, these people uh, investigated. And we do trust that the Zondo Commission uh, will get uh, to the bottom. Uh, of uh, that uh, allegation. It concerns us hugely. We're dealing with a number of problems uh, facing the media industry. The, one of them is legitimacy. As SANEF, we own up. Uh, there are problems. There is a trust relationship issue with the South African uh, public. Uh, there are ethics questions uh, that have uh, come up uh, in the past where there were lapses and uh, processes that were not followed uh, professionally, uh, properly in a number of uh, publications uh, and institutions. So now this adds a further a problem that uh, South Africa, not just uh, us as, as the industry, but for South Africa to deal with. Because it, South Africa it gets now robbed uh, of the, the right uh, to an independent uh, and a professional uh, media. We want to get to the bottom uh, of this right. as soon as yesterday. Therese Thakka, let me give you a cheap shot for <laughs> Sam here. Um, is, is it right that the media goes about trying to regain its legitimacy by going against a regulation from a judge? I mean, that, that's obviously what I was thinking as well. I mean, um, the fact that they're so willing to flout um, laws actually, to me, calls the legitimacy of their actions into question. Um, so, I mean, the thing that we, what is being assumed here is that the media is perfect, and it, it's not. Um, and this is what has uh, transpired today, it shows exactly that. So the media is not um, immune to influence. And I'm not exactly sure why there needs to be this rush. Um, you want to do it yesterday, but what's the difference if you find out who these people are two days from now? Is there some fundamental difference in that? And that's something I'd like to pose to Sam. Um, I think another point that's quite important is that the uh, free right to freedom of expression is, was mentioned. And that is so important. It's a, it's a very important um, and valuable right in the Constitution and should be upheld. But on the other hand, it's not absolute. And there are other countervailing um, interests that may apply. And there's Section 36 of the Constitution, which provides that rights can be limited. And um, the regulations may be a legitimate 
um, limitation of the right to freedom of expression. They'll probably be struck down though, won't they? <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> <Probably>. no judge. <laughs> I'm <Okay>. no judge. <laughs> Sam, I do want to ask you this. Okay, you mentioned the word games, political games earlier before the break. There are all sorts of theories as to who the leaks are. I mean, I can ask people who are journalists, they're not going to tell me and they shouldn't. But, but there is also a suspicion, I suspect, that the leaks are coming from people who are going to be implicated by the Commission and they are using this to weaken the Commission. They're trying to almost make it look as if the Commission is doing the leaking when in fact it is them. Does that not mean that journalists are being used by political factions? And isn't that something journalists should be very aware of? The risk is always there, and this is not new. Uh, you will remember we wrote about these stories three, four, five years ago. Before uh, Tanta was fired in 2015, when was it, 2015 December? December, yeah. Uh, there were uh, so-called intelligence uh, reports, and one was called a uh, spider web, and it was pushed around uh, to newspapers and uh, the business day where I was at the time. Got hold of that, and we asked uh, questions about it. Uh, who's giving us this? Uh, what's uh, their interest? Uh, what are they trying to uh, achieve? So these, uh, this report was trying to paint uh, uh, a few uh, officials and politicians uh, close to the treasury in a very negative uh, light. Uh, just that makes it easy uh, for somebody who wants to capture the, the treasury. So you sort of, by a weakening a particular institution or a group of uh, people, uh, journalists uh, themselves uh, get uh, caught up, uh, they get sucked in by the uh, whirlwind, and it causes a whole lot of uh, uh, confusion mm -hmm. uh, to such an extent that the public no longer trusts uh, the journalists, they don't know the information uh, that you carry so much that when real corruption has uh, to be exposed and it comes out, you do not uh, trust uh, that information. Another example is the VBS uh, mm. story. Before uh, information came out, we saw a few journalists uh, being attacked. We saw the Treasury uh, being attacked and the Reserve Bank who were told that there was an Indian cabal. And then you see a few weeks down the line, these are the people who were actually investigating uh, VBS. So the theory is that they were attacked to weaken them, and the journalists were being silent so that they do not uh, uncover uh, the shocking uh, events uh, around uh, VBS. The same thing is happening around uh, the Zondo Commission. So you're absolutely right, Stephen. We have to be very, very careful about the leaks we get. We must do the basics uh, of journalism. You, you know this. We have to ask why. Hmm. Okay, thank you for this, but why? Hmm. Okay, uh, Teresa, I want to put another argument to you. If I were a lawyer for the, for the press, and I'm not a lawyer, um, I would start in court by suggesting that in today's age of social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc., uh, some people have bigger Twitter followings than the listenership of certain radio stations. They have almost more influence than some media organizations as a whole in terms of just sheer reach. Um, the, the, the net effect, the consequence of stopping mainstream media or formal media or whatever you want to call it, from doing this is that it will go to social media mm -hmm. and that's completely unregulated there's no accountability there um, and that would mean that you would have this sort of free-for-all going on the information would be out there people would give it different weight it would not be mediated in any way and in fact the consequences of that would be far worse because there'll be no way to punish the people we don't even know who some of the people are well, as much as that may be con a concern, um, I think you can't ignore that formal media does lend legitimacy to these concerns. And people are able to look at social media and take it with a grain of salt. So people, I think, can be reflective about what people, um, what people post. They know that it's unregulated. But when you get formal media involved, um, it really does kind of, it, it does legitimate that, um, those um, statements that are made. And, I think that is actually the, the problem here. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Obviously, this debate is going to go on for a while. There's a lot more commission to come. Um, Sam, if, you know, if you're sitting in a newsroom or if you were advising someone sitting in a newsroom, they get documents coming through, m explosive documents, although I don't know what could be more explosive <laughs> than what we've seen. Um, where do you start in dealing with it? What are the rules that journalists should follow when deciding whether to publish or to not publish or what of the documents to publish? I mean, the, this is the basics, really, uh, the five uh, W's uh, and uh, the H and what happened, uh, what's so exciting about it. Why should South Africans uh, care about this and the issue of uh, the public interest and uh, really uh, the, the bigger uh, questions about it and the basics, so what? Uh, we have this and uh, it means uh, what exactly? Why is it uh, so important for us uh, to be doing this? And uh, if there are regulations that limit us, and then we get to, to that uh, aspect uh, of the, the question. So, but getting a, st a statement uh, an hour or two or a day or two uh, 
uh, before the Zondo Commission uh, table. That's a different uh, aspect uh, for us, uh, really. That's not something we have uh, concerned ourselves with uh, as uh, uh, SANEF. It's just the granular, granular aspect of the uh, of the processes uh, and the in the in the operation. We are concerned about uh, the quality. Uh, of our journalism uh, that uh, is being uh, carried out. We are concerned about helping South Africans have a better understanding and a better quality uh, debate about uh, where we are uh, as, a, as, a, as a nation, uh, really. We are trying to extricate ourselves from a very, very painful uh, and a continuing nightmare uh, of uh, massive uh, looting that uh, we have experienced and the weakening uh, of our public uh, institution, including uh, the fourth uh, estate. These are the kind of conversations uh, we want uh, to have. And we want to have a broad uh, conversation uh, in that we are not concerned about a narrow uh, interest of a particular newspaper. or We are about uh, freedom, and the freedom is not just for SANEF. This is about the public's uh, right to know. We want to uh, protect our ability to cover not just the Zondo Commission, but other public uh, uh, institutions as well. All right. Teresa, I do want to put this to you, and I, I imagine you want to shout limitations clause at Sam <laughs> again. But, but I want to put this question to you. Okay, so I don't want to second guess the Deputy Chief Justice on live TV, okay? But, but, the, but, and there's several things that could happen now. But let me, let me say that this could be one of the courses that now happen, one of the, mm -hmm. one of the, one of the futures that happens, which is that Media Monitoring Africa and other organizations go to court, mm -hmm. and this regulation is struck down. Mm -hmm. Now, that has a consequence for the legitimacy of the Zondo Commission. In other words, the media would be shown to be right. Mm. I mean, I realize that you would probably say you could still mount a prosecution, like, like the Dacha cases. Mm. But, but the commission itself would have cr almost created a situation which it would lose some legitimacy in society for coming up with the regulations in the first place. I mean, isn't that something, if I were Chief Justice Zondo, I mean, he would have a better interpretation than I, but I would certainly want to avoid that. Indeed, but of course you don't want to prejudge the outcome um, of, a, of a hypothetical case like that. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, and maybe it's just uh, my, my being a lawyer, but um, to me that wouldn't be a massive blow to the legitimacy of the um, Zondo Commission because it's been determined in a process and, um, and an outcome is, is reached by a court. And obviously, Judge Zondo is a judge. He will defer to that. And that, to me, actually shores up the, the process. It shows that it is, it is right. Um, this, as, as I mentioned, this, um, these provisions are not new. They weren't invented for the Zondo Commission. It has been anticipated that in commissions that um, the dissemination of this information in advance can prejudice, influence, or, um, or where in, um, information is anticipated can have an impact on um, the outcomes of the commission. And I think we need to keep in mind that it is so important for this commission to run smoothly. There's so many, there's so much hanging on it. It costs the taxpayer 230 million rand. And really, this is a matter of something being published the day before or the day after. It's not that big of, an, of, a, of a difference. And um, when we have these concerns about the media and the fourth estate potentially being manipulated, one thing that seems to me is that if you, you can immunize the media against these concerns, if they concede and follow the process that is laid out, then you can't make these allegations of um, manipulation. Sam, I can see you bursting. I can give you 30 <laughs> seconds. Stephen, the Zondo Commission is not the first uh, commission to run in South Africa. Mm. We've had so many of them. Um, Wepe, mm. uh, Hiefa, just there's been a countless uh, commission. This uh, rule is very awkward for us. Uh, it is new, uh, that, uh, the way it has uh, come out. Mm. And as SANEF, we have not taken uh, the commission to court because we recognize the importance uh, of uh, this commission and the, really the need for, uh, for it uh, to do its job as soon as uh, it, it has uh, done and we want it to do it uh, speedily. This is why we thought in the true South African spirit we could have a conversation in, the, in good faith, come to an agreement. We're disappointed that uh, the Zondo Commission has not taken up that offer. Samuel Kukeli from SANEF, thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm. Teresa Thacker, thank you very Tucker, thank you very much indeed. Really did enjoy that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for being with us today on On the Record. You can go back, of course, to sfpcnews.com and go and watch it again if you are interested in this particular engagement. <laughs>